hello and good morning, everyone. Pleased to have you join me today for Friday's Friday morning's devotion. We're going to share the word a little bit. We're going to encourage ourselves. This word will carry us through the day. It'll carry us through uh, as many days as we need, as long as we'll apply this to our life and let God do the work through his word that he so desires to do. I sure trust you've had a really good week, and uh, and I know you're going to have a good weekend. I sure uh, look forward to seeing all of those of you Sunday that can be here. We're going to have a wonderful time. Even, even though uh, Sunday hasn't gotten here yet, we know we're going to have a good time because we're coming for one purpose. We're going to gather in the name of Jesus, so that means he's going to be here. And we're going to usher in the presence of God through our praise and our worship. So it's going to be a wonderful time together. And, and I encourage you and I invite you to come and be a part of us. If you have another church and you ever want to visit, we'd love to have you. You're more than welcome to do so. I want to talk to you a little bit today or this morning about, uh, for title's sake, that God works inside out. God works inside out. See, the new birth took place on the inside of us. You know, until we are, are, are taught in the Word, all of our emphasis is on the natu- on natural things. We're totally, uh, completely controlled and governed by our senses. We do everything in accordance to what our senses tell us is the right thing to do. But see, when we're born again, though, see, our, the, the new birth takes place. The old life, the old nature of sin goes out and the nature of the Lord Jesus comes into us and the life and the nature of God comes into our hearts. See, that's bound to make a change. You see, the change, the greatest change that took place, took place in our spirit. See, we were born again, and the life and the nature of God came in. See, we no longer have the nature of darkness, see, anymore, only the nature of light. And friends, our spirit man that's been born again has only the life of the nature of God. It only desires to do God's will. It never wants to do its own thing. It, ne- it It's never selfish. It never wants to have an impure thought or anything like that. It's perfect, see, because it's like Jesus, see, the man on the inside. So see, our goal in life now, after the new birth, is to allow what took place on the inside of us to come out and affect our life on the outside, see. It's, it's work, God working inside out, see, to affect our bodies and our minds. If you're like me, friends, you needed help in that area. You needed your body under control. You needed your mind, you know, to to be able, uh, you know, to cast down imaginations and all the high things and every thought, you know, to come into the obedience of Christ, you know, and you desire to do that. But see, this is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. There again, the importance of the Word of God. Paul made this statement right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If you have your Bibles and you'd like to look at this, uh, he says here in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 27, he says, but I keep under my body. He says, and I bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. In other words, he's saying, I keep under my body. I, the real man on the inside that was born again, I keep control of my body. I bring it into subjection to the born again man that I am on the inside. And he said, uh, and I do this because when I preach to others, he, he, he uses the words that I wouldn't be a castaway, but what he's saying here, so that I won't be unapproved and rejected as a counterfeit. See, if you're preaching the word of God one way, but your life, you're living it in a different way, then see, you're, you're, you're a counterfeit. See, uh, there's a lot of hypocrisy there if you're saying one thing with your mouth, but you're doing something else with your body. But notice Paul is talking here about working inwardly out. See, he's talking about here, I keep my body under. Well, who's the I here? It's the real Apostle Paul. So see, if he's teaching us, see, to keep our uh, bodies under control, then what it's it's you and I, the real you and I that's been born again, our spirit man is supposed to control our body. Now friends, in most Christians' lives that haven't been taught this way, their bodies control them, see. They, they do what they want to do when their bodies tell them that it's okay to do it. People miss a lot of work, people miss a lot of church, you know, because their bodies are in control and they're dictating their life to them. 
But see, as Christians, we have to learn how to allow the man on the inside, the new man, dominate our outward man. And see, the, the reason we have to do this, the outward man, the body, is not brand new. And that's because it wasn't born again. The new birth seed did not take place in our body or our minds. See, so that means that there has our spirit man has to uh, has to deal with and handle the body and the mind and make it come under submission. See to the things of God. That's why the Bible tells us in Romans chapter twelve, verses one and two. He says, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God." Now listen, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then in verse 2, he says, And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. So see, our minds are renewed. They're not reborn as our spirit is. They're renewed, see, to think in line they, with, with our spirit. So they won't rebel and argue with our spirit, man. They will think in line with it. But friends, even after you're born again, friends, your body still is going to want to do the kind of things that it did before. And that's, again, because it wasn't born again. And see, this is because of a lack of teaching. This is what causes a lot of condemnation because Christians, brand new Christians, find themselves after a, after a period of time, after they were born again, they find themselves wanting to do the same things that they did uh, before they were born again. But see, if we don't do something with our body, like the Apostle Paul says here in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, he says, I keep under my body. In other words, he says, I keep my body under control. See, so see, that means our body is not in charge. Our spirit man is in charge. So once we're born again, then we have to do something with our minds and our bodies so that we will become a complete man and woman serving God, see? So we don't allow our minds to continue to think things that are ungodly. And we don't continue to allow our bodies to do things that we know are sinful and displeasing to God, disobedient to God, see? We just simply stop letting our, our do that, you know. Uh, and, and see, I've, I, I, there's been so many new Christians, you know, try to, uh, give up a habit or something like smoking or something and they'll and they'll throw those cigarettes down you know but in a few weeks see they 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 find out their bodies are craving that again and and when they go pick them up and they light that cigarette and they start smoking again then just tons of condemnation just rains down on them because they feel like that they didn't really nothing really happened to them and friends I'm telling you when that happens the devil is sitting right there whispering in their ear saying see you really didn't get saved because if you really got saved you would have never had the desire for those cigarettes again or you'd have never wanted to do what you uh, used to do you you gave up drinking you quit drinking but now you started drinking again you know and there's that condemnation so the devil's sitting there saying uh, you, you know, see, you didn't really get saved because if you did, you wouldn't have wanted to do those things. But see, friends, there again, that's because the born again experience, see, did not affect our minds and our bodies. So, see, we have, that's why we're working inside out. See, what took place on the inside has to work outwardly to affect our, our bodies and our lives. You know, the Bible teaches us in John's Gospel chapter 1 and verse 4, speaking of Jesus, it says, in him was life, and the life of God is the light of man. In him was life, and that life is the light of men. Now, that word light there stands for development. So, what this verse was saying is, in Jesus is life, the life of God, but the life of God in Jesus is that is at work in our lives, see, we will begin to develop our spirit man so that we become stronger, see, and then we get to the place that we can take authority over our minds and our bodies, see. And again, see, you can see development here. And like I said, this does not take place overnight. There's, there's, this is a time uh, situation here that you have to continue putting the word in your heart and keep speaking it out of your mouth. And then as you grow, see, spiritually, 
and your faith begins to grow, so will your enthusiasm, see, to, to, to take control of your body and your mind because you want to be pleasing to God in all areas of your life, not just in your spirit, man, but in your mind and your body. So, see, we have to do this. But, see, Satan is going to insinuate, see, uh, when your body's wanting to go back to that sinful life, Satan's going to insinuate that that, that that is you wanting to go back. But, see, it's not you, see. he It's your body that's wanting to do that. And it, maybe it's your mind that's wanting to speak those thoughts. The you, see, is is the man on the inside that's been born again and has only the life and the nature of God. So see, when Satan says you really didn't get born again, he's putting all the emphasis on you. Well, you just realize he's not talking. He can't be talking about the real you because, friends, you, your spirit man only desires to please God. See, it doesn't get out of control. It never wants to do its own thing. You know, it never wants to sin or have an impure thought or anything like that. It's holy and desires only to serve God. So see, what when he comes to tell you these things, just tell him he's a liar. Say, I'm being developed, and I ta I'm taking authority over my body, and I'm not letting my body do that anymore, and I'm going to cast those thoughts down. Remember, the Bible tells us to casting down imaginations and every thought that comes and bring uh, and everything that comes against it and bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. See, So see, there again, we have to do something about it, the man on the inside. So see, we're working inside out. Praise God. Well, I hope this has helped you a little bit today. Have a wonderful Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. God bless each and every one of you today.